Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is Going From Burnout to Breakthrough, and I'm so excited to have Molly Asplin on. She is such an inspiration. I love following her on Instagram. She basically went from corporate life to owning her own life. And so Molly, it is so awesome to have you on the show today. Can you give the audience a little bit about your background and where you got to where you are today? Yeah, I I love that corporate life to owning your own life. <laughs> I've never heard anyone explain it like that, but I that sums it up well. So I have a background in corporate finance. Um, I started my career right out of college at a large company, and I thought I would climb the corporate ladder and that that would be it. And you know, life was like that's how my life would be like pencil skirt, Starbucks cup, go into a corporate job every day. And I got a few years into my corporate job and I really had this void, this feeling of, is this really it? Like, I just feel like there is something more for me. I feel like there's something missing. I very much felt like I was just going through the motions. And so I really started working on myself. And I know that sounds cliche, but I really started working on my mindset, reading personal development, listening to podcasts like this, um, working out more consistently and like in a more well-rounded way. And eventually I got into health coaching and built a team of coaches and client groups and was able to pivot away from corporate America and really design my own career, which is based around wellness. And so that's kind of what got me to where I'm at today. And I really like teaching women how to make breakthroughs in their life, specifically with career, or if they're feeling Mm -hmm. even stuck with motherhood to just, you know, rise above that and really step into the person they want to be. Yeah, it's so true. I feel like when I started motherhood, it was such an exciting journey, but I was lost who I was. And I still am to this day trying to figure out like, well, what, who am I? What do I yes. really like to do? Because what I liked to do before kids isn't suitable for who I am today. And mm-hmm. how do we find that? And I feel like it, you know, it becomes a breakthrough in the moment of like, aha, this is what it is. And so yeah. What are some reoccurring themes that you see in women and women wanting to make a change in their life? And what is like some examples of like aha moments within yourself or a, a particular client that you had to where they just made that like breakthrough on, you know, their goals and what they wanted to achieve? Yeah, I think it's like they give themselves permission to go for it. Mm. Um, you know, I'm thinking of one client that I worked with and she, she really thought that like motherhood or like mom was going to be her, her one and only title for life, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, but she got into motherhood and she's like, yeah, but there's more to me, you know, and I don't want to just feel like I'm like in this martyr victim life every single day. Like I want something to call my own and to feel excited about and to work on and to earn income with. And so she, you know, she started working on herself, but she also brought other people with her because that kind of elevated her own accountability with everything too. And I mean, her, you like, look at her life now, it's just totally different. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's just thriving because she took a chance, right. And she gave herself that permission. So I think that's, that's a key thing, especially for moms. It's like, you can still be a great mom and go do things for yourself and build things of your own. Cause also your kids see you do that. And that's powerful, right? Like showing versus just telling. So I remember you posted a Instagram video and there was a quote in there from someone that really stuck with me. Things aren't taught, they're caught. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's so true. Children really absorb the things around you and what you are doing. If they see, you know, mom, happy, active lifestyle, they're most likely going to have an active lifestyle as well. If they see you on the couch, watching TV, being lazy, that's kind of what the habits that they're going to catch and like start to pick up. And it just rang so true. And I just, that quote really stuck with me because our Mm -hmm. habits are everything and our kids are absorbing everything around us. Even when you think they aren't paying attention, they are paying attention. Totally. Yep. You got, you got it. 
Yeah, no, that was a very powerful thing. And, you know, I do, I, and like, even watching you, like sh you definitely, I think in my eyes are like such an inspiration because you really did take ownership of your life and changed it. And you don't give up on yourself. You're always going after what you want to do. You started your podcast, you have a successful, um, you know, workout, program with beach body yeah. and doing all that. And I, I've seen like even the changes like in your body when you've been committed to yourself and now you're, yeah. you're expected like your third baby, right? Yeah. You got it. Yep. Third baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like to manage all of that stuff, you know, being a mom to two little girls, you have one on the way you have this yeah to show up for people because you are their inspiration. How do yeah. you balance all of that? Because mm -hmm. I can hardly keep up with like the little things that I need to yeah. do. So how do you do it? Superwoman? Yeah. I, I heard this concept and it has really stuck with me and it's what I, what I treat, teach myself when I feel like, Oh, I can't keep the balls in the air. And it's this idea of work life integration. Mm -hmm. And so instead of like, you know, trying to make sure this is perfect and this is perfect and this is perfect. It's like business and life, they kind of run together. And mm -hmm. for me, when I'm a better mom, I'm better in my business. And when I'm better in my business, I'm a better mom. And I think they really, I think they should integrate, right? Cause it's like, why do we have to live these like siloed life? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like I'm doing this and then I'm doing this. And so I really kind of let things blend together I really believe in asking for help. Um, you know, my, my kids do go to childcare Monday through Friday, not for full days, but, um, you know, I get them there like mid morning or whenever I feel like getting them there, but I, I give myself space to focus. And, um, so that when I'm working, I can really be in that zone, mm -hmm. but then I, I, you know, my kids see me work too. And I think yeah. that's okay. Um, I, I have areas of life too, that I'm just like, not good at. Like I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a great cook. I'm not like super tidy or super organized. And I'm just like, okay with that. Like, and so instead of like trying to be perfect across all areas of life, I'm like, well, that's just something that's not important. You know, there's a bunch of laundry on my bedroom floor right now, clean laundry <laughs> that yeah. needs to be folded. And I'm just like, well, you know what, that's, it's going to be okay. And yeah. So I just don't, I really try not to get hung up on the small things and just, cause when you, when you can bring joy into your daily life for your kids and your business, it's like, to me, that's the main thing that I'm living each day as the person that I want to live. And the, the small stuff it's it's not going to matter. They're not going to put it in your obituary <laughs> that your house <laughs> wasn't clean. Or, so yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's picking your top priorities and just staying focused on that. I think one of the main things that you said is being able to ask for help. Cause I feel sometimes mm -hmm. women don't want to voice that or they feel oh, yeah. like I can't ask for help because this is supposed to be my job is to watch the kids and, you know, mm -hmm. releasing that guilt. Cause I know it was hard for me at first, you know, to even to start the podcast, like, well, who's going to watch the kids? Like what's going to happen? Yes. Now that they're older, you know, Cole's in, you know, pre-K now, but I still have my 20 month old. And so yeah. I have to like, really strategically plot out my time in order to film these. Yep. It took a lot of time to not feel guilty about wanting to do something for myself. And totally. it only does make you a better mother because you learn so much when you enter into motherhood about yourself that you just want to continue learning and growing and to be that better person. You know, mm -hmm. when talking to people like you and other on the podcast is it, it just has really been fulfilling to understand like the importance of mindset and, you know, having a good mindset, looking at the glass half full and understanding it's okay. Give yourself grace. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be perfect in all the areas that you were talking about. Like it's okay. And give yourself grace. It's okay to leave the clean clothes on the bed or on the floor, you know, yeah. for like a day or two till you can get to it. I mean, mm -hmm. people are still going to have their clothes. The kids are still <laughs> going to be fed. Right. And that's yep. not what they care about. They just want like mommy attention, daddy attention, you know, and mm -hmm. like things to play with and, you know, maybe their tablets or something. <laughs> yeah. No, you're spot on. And I think going back to like how you said with, 
just you starting this podcast needing to be really diligent with your time because that, don't get me wrong, that's a real thing. But we'll come, what will come up a lot for high performing moms, just like you, Christina, is I just need to be more organized. Yeah. I just need to have better habits. And maybe there's a part of that, right? Like I think there's, we all have opportunities to like improve our habits and but I think we got to let go of this narrative of like, I just need to be more productive. I just need to get more done because a lot of us we're doing a lot already. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, maybe we just actually need to create some space and ask for some help or let the laundry sit or what, you know, whatever it might be and focus on the things that we really want to focus on. And if, you know, the podcast or building a business is something, okay, then take that hour and shift something else off. Yeah, totally agree. Hey friends, I hope you are enjoying this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. This podcast would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of you, my wonderful community. To support your mama's podcast, please click the support link right down below and you can donate just as little as 99 cents. Also, follow me in the Shop Like to Know It app where you can follow me with all my exclusive content all the way from baby products I love, fashion and style and everything in between. Now let's get back to the episode. So um, I know we talked briefly about this, but like, what are other some reoccurring themes that you see when it comes to women working uh, to get into like a solid wellness wellness routine? Yeah. You mean like obstacles that come up? Or yeah. Like, like obstacles yeah. that come up. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what, what are some things that, you know, women can take apart now to help, you know, have that yeah. balance of, like a wellness routine, whether that's like taking time to move your body, uh, yeah. meal planning, thought like prep, anything that you um, yeah see. In sure, the- I'm I'm working with a brand new client right now, and she's a new mom of two, and so she's kind of in that postpartum period with her second. And I'm like, that is such a crazy transition. Like I still remember just being like, oh my gosh, this is a lot. That one to two was a big shift for me. Um, And you're kind of still in it, Christina, like 20 months. That's like, that's tough. But I think the biggest, the biggest thing is fitting it in wherever you can fit it in and trying to establish consistency with it. And so, and in, in those early postpartum days, it's probably not going to happen at the same time every day. And, you know, or it's probably not going to happen at 5 a.m. Like, or 6 a.m. I have all these moms who are like, I'm going to do a morning routine. And I'm like, but are you sleeping through the night? No, yeah. then don't do that. <laughs> um, and so I think it's like, I, you know, I hate to say it like this, but kind of having common sense with your like looking at each day and saying, okay, hey, where can I put 30 minutes for me, 30 minutes to move my body, you know, in my basement or go for a walk or whatever you're going to do. Um, because you can almost always make that happen. Yeah. And, you know, even, even in those early days, there's probably a nap or time where your toddler can play next to you or something like that. And so I think it's being realistic, but also disciplined with, I got to make time for me. I'm going to be better for it. And so where can I squeeze it into my day? And then where can I do that again tomorrow? And it might look different for today from today. It probably will. But Mm -hmm. the more consistent you can get with that, the more it just becomes part of you. And then you don't even you don't want to change it. Cause you're like, I'm feeling so good doing this. And now it's become part of my identity. Yeah. Um, I remember I was listening to Andrew Tate, like a small little, um, little voice clip of something he was saying about what makes people great versus not great sure. in, in such words. And it was like showing up and doing what you need to do, even when you don't feel like being that person, Yes. you know, and that's like the self-discipline and, mm-hmm. Cause there are going to be days where you're like, I really don't feel like working out yeah, or I really be. don't feel like writing that part of the, my book that I'm working on, or yeah. don't feel like having this interview today, but just showing up for yourself and not giving yourself excuses because mm-hmm. that's what separates greatness to average. And we just need to have that promise to ourself that this is who we're going to be. And this is who I am. And I'm not going to sacrifice it for a feeling or a circumstance. I can get creative in it. Like if you wanted to work out in the morning, but your kids woke up, you know, why not just like be creative? It may not be like the hit, 
you know, uh, yeah. workout that you wanted to do, but like maybe like a little wall yoga or Pilates or, you know, just taking the kids on a walk and going on a run with them. So, yep. you know, it's just, you know, not giving up on yourself because I feel like a lot of women do that, whether it's in their mm -hmm. fitness life and their goals and ambitions of what they want to do when we don't see the results or our emotions yes. take hold and life throws us lemon, things happen and you get uprooted from where you were and you have to go somewhere else. We, we give up on ourselves and then we feel like we have to start over. And like, why mm -hmm. have that mentality of starting over when we can pick up where we left off? It's not a start over. It's totally. just a pivot. Yes, exactly. A pivot. You got it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but you know, um, so what other things you have to help women break through the challenges that they face in their everyday? I know you um, have a ton of experience in it being a mom yourself and, you know, showing up for yourself every day, um, which I admire. So what, what else can we learn from you and what tools can we take away to start implementing yeah. in our lives? I think it's really important to keep growing, you know, and your a health and fitness routine can be part of that, but it's really easy, especially in motherhood. And I'm guilty of this too, to just go through the motions, right? And you kind of go into autopilot and it's like the, the same old routine every day. And it's, it's easy to get complacent. And one of my biggest fears in life is complacency. I don't like to stay the same. Like I like to change and grow because as humans, we're, we're wired that way, right? We want new, we want change. And that doesn't mean you can't stay committed to something and like see it through. I definitely believe in that. Um, but I find that a lot of moms get really stuck in their everyday mm -hmm. and they get like just stuck in the basics of life and it, it doesn't always feel good. And so then I go back to, okay, what are you doing to actually to grow yourself? You mm -hmm. know, because that feel like as moms, we need something to call our own. And it's like so cool that you have this podcast, Christina, because it's such a good example of, you know, a thought or a vision on your mind that I don't know how you start thought of the idea, but a lot of times we'll think of ideas in the shower or we'll get these tugs, these tugs and these voices to be like, I should really do that. Mm -hmm. I should really try that. But we, we show, oh no, I'm too busy. Oh no, maybe when my kid is in kindergarten. Oh no, maybe, you know, and it's like, no, just start mm -hmm. because no matter where you're at in life, it, the timing's never going to be right. It's never going to be perfect. Um, but you can always start and you can take small steps towards it. And it's, you know, to your point, just like with health and fitness, it's not going to happen overnight, like mm -hmm. success of this podcast or success of, like, it's going to take a little bit of time, but mm -hmm. you might as well get going because think of how much faster over time, then like you can bring these visions to life. And so I just, I hate seeing moms, um, kind of take the back seat on life. I like growth and I like development. Yeah. Um, one thing I've learned through, you know, all the interviews I've done is that if you have a desire for it and you have a little bit of fear that goes with it, go mm -hmm. for it. It's for yes. like, because you have to work through the fear to go after it. So you can see what the success is going to be like, you know, it's not going to be an easy road. You're going to have your ups and your downs, your learning curves, your pivots, you know, all those things. But if you have a desire for it, if you're listening right now, and there's something that you desire to do, but you were just totally fearful of doing it. That's your calling to go and do it because it scares you and it, it excites you to be able to have that life that you want. And you might as well just make the plunge, start now, sit down, you know, at your computer, write out your game plan or whatever it is, you know. I just, um, yeah. I feel like that's so powerful, you know, it's like, and you were talking about like, there's that thing in your mind that's like tugging you and pulling you to do something. It's just yeah. like podcast. Like it scared me to like put myself out there on the internet and, and to talk and, and to do all those things. But I'm like, but this is like what I want to do. Like yeah. I'm fearful of it. And are there still things that I need to learn and grow and to be more vulnerable out there? A hundred percent. But I started it and I did it. And mm -hmm. just like how you started, you know, you're like, I'm going to take a chance. I'm have this fear of not doing the traditional route, but I'm going to go down that way and do it myself. And you did. Yeah. You proved 
you know, to yourself, your family, the world that like, it is possible to have that change that you desire. Yeah. A thousand percent. And it's once you get going, like the first step is the hardest. That's what Mm -hmm. I've learned with any change that I make. It's like that first step is the hardest, but after you start, it's like, okay, that was a little bit uncomfortable. Like, let's try this. And it, you kind of get, um, a little more immune to it. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's such a healthy, like muscle to develop, like that muscle of change. And if you haven't worked it for a while, it's probably even more scary because you've, you've been living the same life over and over again. Yeah. You yeah. know, what is that like insanity? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> like doing the same thing over and expecting like different results. Like you need to change something. And yes. sometimes it's the hardest thing to like look into yourself and be like, all right, like this is like a bad habit or whatever mindset that I have and I need to change. And it's so much easier said than done, Molly. Like, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you know that. Like you sometimes can read the self-help books and then it's just like so hard to implement it in your like everyday life. Like it really takes a conscious effort and like, it's almost like a homework assignment you need to do every day to like get that brain functioning to, to shift. Yeah. Mindset. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. But it's doable. But there, it is doable. And you know, we're in this like consumption society now with information and podcasts and books and it's all awesome, but it's not awesome if we don't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. You know, then it's just like, okay, you just consumed a bunch of media or content <laughs> or whatever. It's like, go do something with that, right? Like do take, do 30 minutes of it a day or whatever you like to do and then go live it. Cause isn't that the point? Yeah, totally. Yeah. We're supposed to, you know, enjoy our presence here on earth, not feel like <laughs> we are like in jail, even though sometimes it could feel like that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so Molly, do you have any last words for our audience today? Um, I would just say that whatever fear that you're fearing or like, you know, whatever fear that you might be feeling, whatever obstacle, whether it's time or I just don't know if I could do it or I, I don't know, you know, if I would have any listeners on a podcast or if I would be able to find any clients for said business, like play the the mind trick with yourself. But, but what if you could, right? Like what if you did start And what if you did have some listeners and what if the podcast grew and what if your business grew and what if you really helped people because we're so quick to like point out the worst case scenario, but Mm -hmm. start training your mindset on the best case scenario, because that's what I do every day. I'm like, yeah, but what if, what if this works and what if, okay, it didn't work today, but what if I try it a little bit differently tomorrow? And you know, that's what keeps me going is playing the best case scenario instead of the worst. So I think that's what I could leave people with today. No, that's great. And so, you know, I usually ask my four questions to all my guests, but Molly is not a first time guest. She actually was in season one, episode two, managing time with littles. I highly suggest that you check out that episode and you can find out all of her juicy answers to my top four questions that I ask all my guests. And down below in the show notes are her links. Don't be shy. Go say hi if you're ready to take the next step in your health and wellness journey. Um, Or if you would love to listen to a great podcast for perspective, um, I highly suggest listening to Molly. And thank you so much for coming on the episode. And I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Christina.